This time on the Highland Woodworker. It's a great show this year. It's one of the biggest woodworking events in the world. We'll take you to IWF 2016 and show you what's hot this year. This one is made for parts that are 3 16ths of an inch. Achieving a smooth surface on thin stock, Fine Woodworking's Matt Kinney has the finer points. How lucky am I to work here every day? And as if Vermont isn't beautiful enough, wait until you see some of the pieces that come out of this rural hand-built workshop. A moment with master furniture maker, Garrett Hack. All of this and more, this time on the Highland Woodworker. Hello, I'm Charles Brock and I am a Highland Woodworker. I just love coming to Highland Woodworking in Atlanta, Georgia. It's where I get all my fine tools for woodworking and a great woodworking education. Hello, Ed Sint. Hey, Chuck, good to see you. Nice to see you. Ed, is there something new in the power sharpening field? There's a water cooled sharpener by Tormac, the T8, that's just come out. I'd be happy to show you. I can't wait to see it, but first, IWF, the International Woodworking Fair, is in town. It's great for woodworkers, and we're going to take you there right now. It's a great show this year. It seems like there's a lot more energy here. There's a lot more excitement here, so we've enjoyed it very much. A lot of CNC machines, and we'll see if we can find something we can buy here. I'm at IWF in Atlanta, Georgia. This just gets better every other year, and I've been coming for years. There's something for every woodworker. Let's go check it out. I'm with Clark Whiteside of Whiteside Tool Company, and they not only make a whole range of American-made router bits, they're in the big tool industry, too. That's correct. Most of the, the product you see on this table was developed for the boat building industry drilling through wood and fiberglass as well. Um, there's some crossover of the product. Um, the countersinks are widely used in boat building, but they have an appeal to the average woodworker as well. Anybody's using flathead screws. That's right. I don't think I have a use for this in that's my right. shop right now. Yeah, that's, that's sort of a dedicated product. Our background was developing router bits for the furniture industry in Hickory, North Carolina back in the 70s, but we've, we've spread out and now sell to the consumer market as well. What we have on display here is our full line of the, most, of the best selling bits that we have. Um, we have a catalog that shows um, our full line as well as the best sellers. Um, each of these bits um, has an actual size wood profile. Makes it much easier to pick out the tool that you need, yes. Well, high quality products. And Clark, thank yep. you so much. Thank you. Tell us about uh, Saw Stop and what's going on at IWF. Well, Chuck, you know, Saw Stop for years has been known for the safety feature, right? It keeps your finger safe. Your finger comes in contact with the spinning blade, it stops it, drops it in five milliseconds, greatly reducing injury, right? What a lot of people don't know about is the quality of the saw. As a matter of fact, we've taken the top off of one of our uh, five and a half horsepower industrial cabinet saws, and you can see in there the quality of that saw. The, uh, the, the trunnions are just massive. Everything in there is built to last. And what that equates to is not only a good quality saw, but a lot less vibration. Plus, we have the tightest tolerances of anybody in the industry. Our arbor run out is less than one one thousandth of an inch. When you pull a saw out and you put it together, the alignment of the blade and the splitter is one one hundredth of an inch or less. The alignment of the blade to the miter slot is one one hundredth of an inch or less. And when you put a saw stop together, it goes together perfectly every time. Another thing that people don't think about, other than the safety feature of the saw stop stopping the spinning blade, is sawdust. Sawdust can be a problem as well. Saw stop is the only saw on the market that has 99% dust collection. With the addition of our dust collection, blade guard, four inch board on the back of your saw, we will collect 99% of airborne dust as you're cutting your wood. So not only will it keep your fingers safe, but it'll keep your lungs safe as well. If a saw stop ever has any issues, we want to make sure it's up and running as quickly as possible. So our service techs work directly with the customer, overnight parts to them, walk them through on how to change anything out that needs to be done so that they can get back up and running as quickly as possible. You can't beat that. No, Thank you so much, Rick. Thank you, appreciate it. Well, I'm with Philip. 
and he's with Narex Tools. He's all the way from Czechoslovakia, and I'm proud to be here and hear him talk about his uh, value chisels and his premium chisel line. Okay, so bent chisels are our best-selling products. Uh, so we do have these value chisels. They were awarded as best value chisels. So it was back in 2008 by Fine Woodworking Magazine. And we also started with a premium chisels where we improved the grinding. So the blade has got thin sides that go all along the length. So they are better suitable for dovetailing operations. We also fitted the blade with a nicer looking handle. It's made of hornbeam wood as opposed to the beech wood. It's much harder and tougher. It withstands the mild blows and it does not have to have the ferrule at the end or the hoop. So uh, it's much more comfortable when you, you know, uh, pushing the chisel through the wood. It's much when you hold it. Yeah, it in is. Your it palm. fits the hand. Yes. Yeah. And then there is a, a brass ferrule, which is very nice looking. Well, it, well, it's big, and that uh, that grinding on the side here is going to be wonderful for cutting those those dovetails. And nothing's harder than hornbeam, except my mother-in-law's head. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, that, that's that's great. This is Leo, the marketing director for Fest Tool USA. Leo, it's so nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Hey, listen, you've got some great new products. That's our new HK and HKC. We have it in two versions. One version is the corded version, but the other version is the cordless version. All right. It's an 18 volt version. Same comes with the same battery as all our other cordless products. So it's one system. And uh, the really nice thing about this new circular source is now uh, um, for us a step into the carpentry and into the framing world. So what makes it special? It's a circular saw, but what makes it really special? is the FSK guide rails. The nice thing about it, you can attach it to the guide rail and it will stick right there. And so you can cut material all day long with it, cut perfectly straight lines. Exactly. You all have a great line of sanders here. That tell us about. So those ones are our new brushless sanders, ETS EC. We have it as a five inch and a six inch. The nice thing about a brushless sander is that it's a longer lifetime and you also feel the power. So um, it's very ergonomic, very versatile because it's very light, but then you also got the power. But it's a finished sander, again, five inches, six inch. What's very important always when it comes to sanding is dust extraction. So we always recommend the CTs along with the sanders. We're working in a system, dust gets extracted, which saves you abrasives. Uh, but also saves your health and keeps well, your shop clean. And it gives you a better finish too. That's for sure. Because it's taking away the grit as exactly, it uses Exactly, right it. at the source. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's great. And look at this. Guys, it won't wear you out. And uh, sanding is something that nobody likes, but they like the finished product and they like the heft of the machine, which is very little. Uh, that's great. Couldn't say it any better. Well, thank you so much, Leo. Absolutely. Todd, tell us about Axiom Precision CNC. Sure. Our line of machines starts at uh, one by one, a small, what we call our, our hobby AR1, and goes clear up to our brand new elite uh, four foot by four foot machine. But I'd like to actually show you our most popular machine, our category machines, which are our Pro Series CNCs. They include a liquid-cooled, uh, three-horsepower liquid-cooled electric spindle. You can see how cool that is. It's been running since 7.30 this morning. Wow. Um, and each one of these spindles is cooled by a liquid cooling system, which includes a radiator cooling fan and a pump and reservoir that circulates coolant through that spindle. No uh, bucket and aquarium pump on the floor beneath it. It's all self-contained and just a really a clean package. All of these machines utilize uh, high wind style prismatic linear guides in all three axes and uh, rolled ball screws in all axes. We have a massive structural aluminum tabletop. We built a massive table and then hung the guides from beneath the table. And that would ensure that if you and I were to stand on this table and if it were to de deflect 10 thousandths of an inch, the gantry moves with the table, which ensures that this distance between the collet and your substrate remains the same at all times. 
just extremely accurate machines. They're also uh, very fast, but most importantly, they're very intuitive and easy to run. And uh, you would expect to pay a whole lot more for yeah. a machine with these features and benefits. Yeah, we found a unique place in the market. We sell a lot of machines to uh, customers that, here's a Windsor chair seat that's a neat project. Uh, guitar making, sign making, they're just terribly capable machines, almost uh, limitless in, in their capabilities and uh, very, very easy to master the software and uh, become very proficient running them. Well, can you deliver one to my Spring Hill, Tennessee shop? It's on its way. All right, Sandy's a chore. Supermax makes it better and it's coming to Highland Woodworking. Tell us about that. Yes, we are coming into Highland Hardware. It is a, uh, we have a 1938 drum sander, meaning you can do 19 inches or you have a board 38 inches, you can flip it around and do the other side. A whole panel. A whole panel. Uh, we also have this one here that's a 2550, which is 25 or 50 inch, so if you have a 4x8 sheet, a of, plywood, sheet of plywood, you, you yeah, can that's run great. it through there too. So, yeah, and it's yeah. a drum sander. Yeah, it's just a, uh, you just uh, wind it on there, and it has a clip at this end. You've improved these a whole lot. Yes. Especially being able to keep it level and flat. Show us how you Correct. did that. We have four bolts on the side here that you loosens up, and there's a little lever here that will raise or lower to keep this parallel. So you don't have to fool with this anymore. No. And no. you don't get this, gray hair yeah, and all that sort exactly. of stuff. It's a quick, easy uh, fix. That's wonderful. Some jack screws under there and it takes care of it. Now the other thing that's nice about that is if you have a wide board when you run it through and you flip it around you end up with a groove because it's it's it just gets that groove in there. Y'all done something to, to stop We that. have corrected that. We have this lever back here that is on a cam and when you flip this down it raises that table three one thousandths of an inch. So it's kind of tapered down a little bit. And when you run the board through and flip it around, it will have that, it won't have that groove in there. It will be nice, I mean, it, it'll be nice and flat. Well, this is Joe Taylor with Rikon, and they've got some great new products at the show here. And I like this one. Tell me about it. Sure, Chuck. This is our new spindle sander that we have to offer. And the great thing about this machine in that is that this is all steel construction. It's not plastic, which has a nice heavy duty cast iron table with a great rack and pinion system that allows you to adjust your table from zero to 45 degrees, which runs really nice and smooth. You have a nice big knurled knob in the front that locks the table in place as well as an additional lock handle in the back. So once that's locked in place, when you have that at 90 degrees, that's nice and solid. The unit also comes with five spindles. It comes with half, three quarters, one, one and a half and two, and there's an option for a three inch spindle as well. That's sold separately. But the great thing, again, the great thing about the machine is that it's all steel construction. Well, Joe, you don't want to use the same grinder, high speed grinder that you use for your, your lawnmower blade for your fine woodworking tools, do you? Absolutely, you want to use a low speed grinder. And Rikon recently introduced our larger model, which is a one horsepower low speed grinder. The great thing about this unit, it has an LED light, really nice big tool rest, and the beauty too is that this includes magnetic eye shields too. So for us, you know, when you're grinding to get a closer look to see how your edge is, having a magnetic shield is a really nice benefit, as well as having these arced arms, which are an improvement from previous models that we have that just have a wire. These have a nice high arc solid arm that locks in place really quick. Nice solid cast iron base and it also has got a five year warranty. We're really excited to announce, um, we've updated our previous version of the 10325 to the new 10326. And the beauty of that is we have three new patent pended features on the saw. The first one being is our new quick adjust drift vent. So for those, for those saws that have the tendency to drift a little bit because the blade might be a little bit off, you're able to adjust the drift from the top of the fence now instead of going underneath with these two pins. There's a simple cam right here that loosens up to allow the end user to take their fence and adjust it left to right so they can get it dead on and squared to the blade. Once they have that all set, they can take that locking in place. The other thing that we've done was we increased the actual fence part to have a six inch tall fence. 
for those of you who are resawing, that's a great added feature. We've also included a nice long rail, so now you could remove the hardware and cut the saw on the left and on the right, which is great. The next feature that we have is we have a nice, we improved the trunnion system. So it's a cast iron system now with a quick release lock that lifts up and you have a nice crank handle that adjusts the table from zero to 45 and then you could take it, lock it in any position. Once you get it back to 90, you have that nice handle that's gonna lock it in place. But the most important feature that we have is that we're really excited about is the new toolless guide systems. So now there's no need, no longer the need for any Allen wrenches or anything to adjust your bearings and to dial in because now everything is toolless. There's two, there's two knobs on the front that you're gonna loosen up on here and these pins that are on the left and right is spring loaded. So now when I want to adjust my guides to my blade, I could just take one hand, squeeze these two pins together, set it to the proper distance of the blade, lock it in place, and I'm all set. That setup is done on the top as well as on the bottom. You do something for somebody who already has a Rikon band saw and wants to update. Yeah, absolutely. So for those of the customers who have the, the older 325 model, they're going to be able to update their system with a retrofit kit. So this system is going to allow previous owners of the 325 to update to the Tula's Guide system. Customer service at Rikon for every customer, every product is always first rate. Great. Thank, thank you. you so much, Joe. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. IWF, that's a wrap. Chuck, this is a Tormek T8, and Tormek has been making water cool sharpeners now for over 40 years. This is their newest sharpener. It's a unit that's been redesigned, both from the cabinet, how the water tray trough works, and also the edge guide for sharpening your chisels and plane irons. Some amazing uh, new features which allows you to actually camber your plane irons now so you can get a nice uh, cut with your plane so, so the outside edges don't dig in anymore. That's right. That's a great benefit. It looks like a wonderful package. We're going to see one in action later in the show. Coming up! There were some guide rails attached so that my hand plane rides down the track like that. Fine Woodworking's Matt Kinney has the skinny on smoothing those tricky slim boards. So this has got about 20 or more drawers. I haven't totaled it up yet. And it's about maybe half of those are secret. An encrypted masterpiece in the making. A moment with master woodworker Garrett Hack. Stay tuned, you're watching The Highland Woodworker. I'm just an average, down-to-earth woodworker. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm probably about a 5. But one place I score a perfect 10 is right here. And I plan on keeping all 10. That's why I have a saw stop table saw. And there's more. Plenty of power, superior dust collection, and absolute accuracy. These features have made it the best-selling cabinet saw in America. Let Highland Woodworking help you put a saw stop in your shop. What is quality? Is it quick? Forgettable? Easy? No, it isn't quick or easy. It isn't forgettable. Quality takes work. It takes time. Quality lasts. And it starts at Bell Forest, a leading global supplier of figured and exotic woods. Order online at bellforestproducts.com. Highland Woodworking stocks a wide selection of Rikon power tools known for their innovative design and rugged durability. Highland has sold thousands of Rikon's industry-leading bandsaws with sizes to fit every woodworking need, from the compact affordable 10-inch model to competitively priced 14 and 18-inch models. Shop us also for Rikon's reliable planers, lathes, and professional low-speed grinder, all with an exceptional five-year warranty. Rikon. Power tools. Woodworkers count on American-made forest saw blades for smooth, quiet cuts every time, without splintering, scratching, or tear-outs. The famous Woodworker 2 is the all-purpose combination blade, but for special cuts, Woodworker 2s are available for cutting dovetails, for flat bottom joinery. A 30-tooth blade is perfect for ripping, a 48-tooth blade for superior cross cuts, and a finger joint blade set. 
There is a perfect forest woodworker too for every table saw cut. Highland Woodworking has been a leader in woodworking education for more than 30 years. They offer all kinds of woodworking classes year round, ranging from how to hand cut dovetails and mortises to how to sharpen a plane or a chisel, how to build a cabinet, a chair, or a bookcase, or how to turn a wooden bowl. There are classes on wood finishing, French polishing, and even antique furniture restoration. For a list of upcoming classes that may interest you, just look in their catalog or go to highlandwoodworking.com. Matt, uh, planing thin stocks, always a problem. They put it through the, the planer and, and you don't get exactly what you want when you get really right. thin. How do you handle that for these beautiful boxes? Yeah, the way I do it, uh, because I don't have a drum sander in my shop, which would make it really easy, but, uh, and also I like to have a hand plane surface on my boxes inside and out. So what I ended up doing was making a shooting board uh, for anything less than a quarter inch thick. And a lot of these small boxes that I make have sides that are only 3 16 of an inch thick. Yeah. And so I made this little shooting board. It was inspired by a guy named John Reed Fox, who does make Kumiko, Japanese Kumiko. And he puts rails on the bottom of his hand plane, his Japanese kana. And that's how he guarantees the thickness. I can't do that to a metal body plane. So I thought, why not make a shooting board that has rails on it? So... There's this piece of plywood, and I glued down two rails to it. And then I sent it through my planer so that those two rails were the exact same thickness and in the same plane. After that, there were some guide rails attached so that my hand plane rides down the track like that. And then there's a little stop. And this one is made for parts that are 3 16 of an inch thick. And so the piece goes in, you can see it's a little proud right now. And then the plane goes on. And there's so much difference in a hand plane board and one that goes through a a planer, the qual is cut rather than kind of beat. And yeah, well, you know, because the planer has the rotating head, so you end up with the little scallops and everything. So you got to do something about those, anyways. Uh, I use the planer to get close, and then come to this jig to finish it off and end up with parts that are perfectly the right thickness and uh, have glass smooth surface. That's the way to go. Absolutely. And then in '93, I started building this place. Still ahead, a moment with master woodworker, Garrett Hack. Plus, we're getting the nitty gritty on the Tormek T8. You're watching The Highland Woodworker. For 35 years, Lee has manufactured the world's best joinery jigs. From our award-winning dovetail jigs and mortise and tenon jigs, to newer innovations like router table jigs, Easily add strong, beautiful joinery to your woodworking pieces, like half-blind dovetails, box joints, mortise and tenon joints, and through dovetails. Lee, simply the easiest and most versatile router joinery jigs. Are your tools Tormac sharp? Tormac, consistent, reliable, and razor sharp. Tormac, sharpening innovation.
Introducing the ultimate flush trim rammer bit by Whiteside. Get CNC quality cuts from your patterns every time. Whiteside, industrial grade and American made. Woodpeckers, makers of fine woodworking tools like router tables, precision router lifts and fences, plus measuring and layout tools including squares, rules, triangles and more. We offer unique clamps like box clamps, the knuckle clamp and X-mat system. Our one-time tool program offers woodworkers innovative new tools. Woodpecker's precision tools are made and tested using state-of-the-art equipment. Woodworking tools from Woodpecker's. Tools you can trust for generations to come. If you can't make it to Highland Woodworking in Atlanta, Georgia, you can shop online at highlandwoodworking.com. They're great at getting what you want to your shop quick. Moment with a Master is brought to you by Woodpeckers. Farm to table might best describe the furniture making process of Garrett Hack. Let's go to his amazing hand-built Vermont workshop and spend a moment with this self-sufficient master woodworker. How lucky am I to work here every day? Over the mountains and through the woods, travel up and down this windy, leaf-covered Vermont road, and finally, you'll find it. The picturesque property that's home to one of the most intriguing furniture makers of our time, Garrett Hack. He does it all. He's a farmer. But I've got some nice early things going. A forester. Nice hard maples in here. Sugar maples. Another red oak. And a fine woodworker. His skills are as natural as the locally grown elements he uses to produce stunning pieces like these. It was an honor to be invited to Garrett's hand-built workshop to learn more about this master craftsman and hear about the path he took to get to where he is today. Let's talk about young Garrett Hack. You know, uh, where are you from? I mean, are you from here? Or you... I grew up in Connecticut. And uh, my father bought a farm in, across the river in New Hampshire, which is 10 miles away, if, la if that, in uh, the, the mid-60s. So I was very taken by the, we come up here to ski and that kind of thing. I was very taken by Vermont. And uh, when I had a chance to buy this piece of land in 1979, I did. I was just out of college, five years out of college. I was building furniture back then and been on the same piece of land now for 36 years. Well, it looks like a, a great fit. Um, your elementary and high school teachers, did they see something in you or did well, you gain I, something from them? That, that I did work. I did work back then. In high school, I did some work. I did some school in, in middle school. I have a piece that I still have from them, a pair of bookends that I made with my name carved on them. But uh, I did some in high school. I had a pretty good shop and a pretty good instructor, so I got a little bit of a feel for that. But I studied engineering and uh, architecture at Princeton, so I didn't do any, anything with woodworking then. It was only after I got out uh, in 74 that I uh, moved back to New Hampshire and decided I really wanted to do things that related to woodworking. So I was doing more construction. I was really interested in barns. So I was taking down barns and moving them. I moved one and made a house out of it for myself, as well as um, repairing the heavy timber structures of barns, which I found very, very fascinating. How did they design these so that they you know, were efficient and that kind of thing. And then slowly segued into doing more of the things inside these structures, and that really sort of you know, got me going in furniture. I went to Boston University's program in artisanry, which is, as far as I'm concerned, the best program there was. J.R. Osgood was my teacher. He's still a friend and a peer. And then when I got out of there in 80, I went two years, which is plenty enough because I already had a degree and I didn't need any more degrees. I didn't even get a degree from them. I just was in the shop for two years. Uh, I set up and basically, uh, on this land, built a shop. It's part of the house now. And, and then in 93, I started building this place. Well, Garrett, this is part of your footprint. A big part of it is this beautiful shop. But I understand you built it all with your hands. Yeah, not 100%. I had help with an electrician friend to do the electrical work. But uh, no, I wanted to learn about stone and cutting stone. We have a lot of granite here in Vermont. And I want to learn about bricks, which I've always been curious about, how to lay bricks. So I had a friend, a mason friend help me with that part. And uh, I wanted to do a slate roof. I always wanted to do a slate roof. So uh, I, and we have a lot of good slate on the western side of Vermont, right up against New York State. So I started in 1993, cleaning the bricks, took over a year to clean the bricks. I learned how to cut the stone and cut that for the foundation. And then um, 
slowly worked on the inside and all the wood came off the land for the most part. I love the idea of the light, how much light I get. I love the idea that it's a very inviting piece, place for someone to come, a clients to come. You know, they're intrigued by it. They say, what's this old building here? Some people call it a church. And I love the fact that when I was cleaning the bricks, I found this one, October 25th. I found it October 24th, as I remember. And this one says butcher. That was fun to find those. Garrett, I, I just think your scale uh, for each piece is, is just beautiful. From the ratios of one, uh, one piece, a proportion yeah. is, is just one. Does that come from your architectural studies? or? I think it comes from just doing it and really being introspective about it and look at it and say, does that really work for my eye? I think you get, uh, woodworking is additive. You don't just start out one day and build a masterpiece, a high boy or whatever mm -hmm. it is. You've got to build other things and build up the skills. And um, in my, my work, it's always an evolution. I'm always looking, okay, I'm working here. Where else can I go with it? Where, what's the next step to take these ideas, whether they're decorative ideas or aesthetic ideas in terms of uh, shape or whatever it is. And I think that a lot of that proportion stuff just comes from developing your eye. Your, your work is uh, so clean. Well, that is, is one of the, the, the first things that I've always seen and so well executed. Hand uh, tools. With hand tools. And you're continuing to uh, push curves yeah. and, and bow fronts yeah. and, uh, yeah. and surprises with little drawers. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, tell us about your direction there. Well, the piece I'm working on now is the most complex of my career. And it's bringing together a lot of the ideas that I've evolved for the last 40 plus years. Um, it's got a lot of little drawers. It's got a lot of little secret drawers and secret drawers within secret drawers and that kind of thing. I talk about levels of encryption. It's got lots of levels of encryption. As I'm working, I'm often thinking about uh, solving this problem, but then, okay, what's the next problem? What's the next, where, where, how else could you use this? It's, it's a commission from a, a couple in New Hampshire that owned a couple of my pieces already. And they wanted me to build something that really pushed my skills as far as I could go. They basically said the sky's the limit. And they didn't have any requirements for what it actually does. It doesn't have to fulfill any functional need other than just to have it to be a very entertaining piece and fun piece and that kind of thing. So um, I spent about three years thinking about the design. As I said, I was a deer in the headlights for that long because that's an amazing commission and you want to really do oh, the it's most. the perfect commission. Yeah, you want to do something really amazing. So I started out with the shape. So I'll, I will often start with a pattern. This is the most direct way for me to actually build the piece. It's got a reference lines and various things. It's got the overall shape. And then the interesting thing about that is, is that pattern is projected through the piece, but not necessarily in a linear way. If you look at this back here, you'll see the way this stave, when it's all done, and you really only can see one stave, it's going to, sh it, it has a curve to it. I've got to shape some of these a little bit more. But the idea is that it's got an outward flare to these staves now that will form the... So the there's kind of a, a flare or a taper. There's a taper All to the it. way, yeah. yeah. And this is what the staves are actually going to look like, something more like this, when you put that skin on there. So what's interesting is you've got these legs in the front that can't back in space. They they splay, they will splay, and then you've got to go from basically a, a straight line to this flaring line and then come back again on the other side. So there's a, there's a lot of technical challenges and then I've got all these internal partitions. So this has got about 20 or more drawers. I haven't totaled it up yet. And there's about maybe half of those are secret. There's a pair, three drawers that come out here and this is actually I haven't pulled this piece out very much, but this comes out. This is how the timbre goes in. There's a timbre door that goes in, it goes all around the front, and this has to come in from the back. So the little drawers here that fill in this space allow me to still to move the timbre in. And then these are the drawers and the top. So this is where I started building was building these parts. So this is a piece that goes up in here, down in here in this position. This forms the curve of this. And then this is the piece that comes in here. They flow together. You can't, can't see that yet, but they'll flow together. And then these three drawers happen below. 
and these sort of ripple. Yeah, the, the ripples are just fascinating. Yeah. Was, uh, what were some of the problems or, I mean, evidently these are the successes. What were some of the problems <laughs> in doing that? I could show you one of the not successes. <laughs> this is the one that wasn't such a, such a successful one. But I, the problem I had was I couldn't get the fibers to move into the form as well as I would like to. Tell you, Garrett, it's been wonderful to see that we all have or should have challenges in our pieces, and Definitely. we have to just work them out one yeah, question yeah, at a time. Yeah, that's what it is. And you do a marvelous job of that. I can't wait to see this piece. Is it going to be in the magazine? Oh, it'll probably be somewhere. Uh, well, it, wherever <laughs> it is, can't somewhere. wait to see it. Yeah. You've had such an influence over, over uh, so many woodworkers through Fine Woodworking Magazine and teaching all over the world and building these beautiful commissions. Uh, what would you like for your legacy to be? How would you like to be remembered? I know it's funny to hear about the school of Garrett Hack, but there actually is sort of a school of Garrett Hack out there. I think just um, passing on my passion has really been fun. Um, I love the idea that we've been teaching in Europe a lot more, my wife and I. She comes with me to support me. Very, very important part of it. I think that's probably the, the thing that's going to last, is the books, the articles, the sort of pieces of furniture. And I would say that all that teaching and just passing on that enthusiasm is what I hope to remember it for. I'm here with Stig with Tormac, and he's going to show us the brand new Tormac T8. Let's see it, Stig. Oh. So this is the new T8, as you said. Got some new improvements. Got a water lift on it. We have a small, nice feature on the, oops, too much tools. On this one, I have a scrape. On the old model, you had a lot of metal debris in there. So I can remove the scrape with a magnet in it. So I want to clean it out and just take it away. Yeah, so it'll pick up all the little bits of metal. All the little bits of metal and Put it back on, and we've got this water lift system, which lifts it up, so you don't need to mess around with it anymore. That's a new, pretty cool solution we have. Because on the T7, as you try to pull it up there, it's sloshing around and, and so some, forth. Yeah, so yeah, find a little fiddly. That's right, you have to fiddle with it a little bit. So we, we try to listen to our, our users, of course, and try to do the most of it, a new thing we can do. But of course, the housing is in zinc. Everything is molded in one piece, even the sleeves, which means the precision is way better than the, the T7. So small improvements, we have a sink wheel, won't, won't let you down ever um, on the inside here. Oh, I see. So sometimes after, you know, 30 years, the, the nylon might crack and we don't want, want the problem anymore. Full enclosed sides. Uh, cords on the side, it's not in the way when you use the turning, t uh, turning table. And That's wonderful. It's cool, and we have the uh, power switch on the top, instead of if earlier you had to reach over and this right. is if more... Right, you turned it around, then you had to reach, exactly. do that all the time, yes. Um, so, pretty much, but all the jigs works on it, the same as we had before. Well, you've got a jig uh, now that automatically squares it up for you. Yeah, you have kind of micro adjustment on it. So if you use a plain iron, plain iron or a chisel, you can have small adjustment to get it all aligned up to 90 degrees. You want to show that to us? I will. You can turn this around here. So you can see here, I mounted, mounted the, the tool already, but when it comes from the factory, this is had in one line, and I can use the screws here to adjust the angle on it. And one more feature that it has is if you open it up enough, same distance, you can start to sharpen a camber, which we couldn't do before. That's wonderful. You had to wait till you were uh, doing some fine honing to be able to do the camber. Yeah, or you're a long protrusion trying to press it down on the, on, the, on the side. So this is way easier. Also, we can turn this knob and just move it along so the old jig, actually, if you, if you mount the tool, lock that one and start to lock it, you might squeeze it. That means the, the, the plane would go over to the side and you will get a auto-square 
Jake. That's right. That that is a great feature. Everybody that has a T7, if you don't want to buy the T8 yet, you need to buy one of these. <laughs> buy the Jig. Yes. It's made of sync also, and the precision and everything now these days are really good. I think the uh, the user will find no problems anymore getting the, the tools straight on the line. And well, of course, a nice camber is always can be cool to have. Those are some great enhancements. Uh, the people at Tormac are always listening and they're always making an even better product. I've got one, I use it, I love it. Thank you, Tormac. <laughs> thank you. Bye -bye and Stig, it. too. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Improve your woodworking experience. Sign up for Wood News Online, a monthly newsletter showcasing the latest news, tips, and classes Highland Woodworking has to offer. By signing up, you'll receive the latest episode of the Highland Woodworker, special store promotions, and Wood News Online delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up today. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Follow us on our social media channels as well. And until next time, I'm Charles Brock, and I'm a Highland Woodworker.